up everyone? Patrick with Walsh of the Woods here. How you doing today? Heading down to the base camp. Gonna go for the first overnighter there. I think everything's set, complete, built, cut, and ready to go. Um, hopefully it'll be a good night. Shouldn't get too cold. It's supposed to be minus one tonight. Uh, I got lots of clothing, extra wear, lots of food, all kinds of stuff. So this is a night to relax and get out and have some fun and enjoy the cabin. All this hard work over the summer, trying to get it ready. I don't really have much in the way of camp chores. Really all I have to do is collect some, uh, hopefully collect some hardwood. Uh, there's not much in this area, but we're going to go on a little, so to speak, goose hunt for some hardwood. See if we can find some uh, for the late night burning. But outside of that, still have lots of um, spruce kicking out. So. I uh, should be fine for the night in any which way. I always have a lot of stock and su supply. So, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, I got a crap ton of gear with me. I got about probably 50 pounds. It's just way too much. I brought a lot of extra water just in case. I thought it might be a good idea to have drinking water just available. Uh, that way, I don't have to bring my filter out. And then I'll also collect water to boil as well. So, uh, it's you know just one of those things. So I'm going to keep moseying on, uh, the pack's getting a little heavy as it is, it's not really built for this kind of weight, so uh, I will uh, get going and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. So as I mentioned before, I got lots of gear and uh, it's pretty heavy, I have an Atmos AG50, it's an Osprey, I think they're weight rated to about 40 pounds. So, I'm a little over the limit, but fortunately it's not far to the base camp. Uh, this is a great pack, by the way. I should do a review on it, actually. It's um, fairly expensive, but it uh, rides like a dream. Like, it just carries the gear so smoothly and efficiently. And I've never had any issues with it. It's felt great from day one. And, I, you know, I think packs are... Are really specific to the individual but I've been really happy with it my buddy Ben's really happy with it he bought one it was very similar film uh, same same kind just a uh, different color and yeah I've really enjoyed it but it's not really meant for 50 plus pounds it's 40 45 I think it's the upper limit but I might be wrong um, Osprey makes really good packs but then again there's a lot of companies that make good packs and depends on what kind of hiker you are too like I'm more of a, you know, a not long distance backpacker or anything like that, but, you know, I like to go multi-day backpacking and reasonably light. So either lightweight, not usually ultra light, but I don't want to be, you know, kind of regular backpacker. So anywhere from the 15 to 25 pound range uh, without food and water. Uh, rarely over 25 with food and water, actually. So I don't... Uh, I don't like, you know, carrying too much if I don't have to. Uh, the difference with this pack, it is a bit heavier. It's a little over four pounds um, compared to my Exos, which is two point two pounds five ounces or so. So big difference there. But like I said, this guy just carries everything so well; it's never an issue. So uh, we're gonna head down on the hill, and I'm gonna show you little handrail thing I made up the other day real quick it's kind of didn't do a very good job of it but uh, it uh, it'll serve its purpose so in a minute I'll show you what that is Okay, so the first order of business is to. This is the first order of business. I have no idea. Ah, uh, yes. I think I will collect some water just because 
That'll just save me from doing it later. Uh, save me a little time. So yeah, we're gonna get some water and uh, then we'll probably start making plans to go get some uh, hardwood, if at all possible. You know what? Scratch that. Screw that. I'm gonna have a cup of Joe. I am. I'm hiking down here. I went for a run this morning. Screw that. I'm gonna get a cup of coffee first. Sit back. Put my feet up for a few minutes. Relax. Enjoy this fine, cold weather with a breeze. Cause that's the way we like it. And um, yeah, and then we'll, then we'll go get water, and then do all that jazz. Or wait, maybe I should get water, then have the coffee. Thinking now, Patty boy. Thinking now. So I bought this uh, old tin. Uh, cooking pot, I guess, teapot. Uh, I don't think I actually ever got a date off it. And I don't think it's even military or anything like that. But I thought it was pretty neat. I got it at a thrift store. And uh, so it came with the two handles and the lid, of course. Pretty standard. It was in pretty good shape. And what I did is I drilled a couple holes in the side of this bad boy. And then made my own bale for it so I can hang it over the fire. As you saw in a previous video, I had a new hang, so now I can use that on that. all done. Super easy. Standard Starbucks. I've seen these in many, many, many videos and you'll see them in many, many videos to come for sure. They're super tasty and uh, not too cheap, but uh, relatively, oh, it's not expensive. I guess you'd probably sum it up to about a 75 cents Canadian for a packet, but it's totally worth it. Hashtag worth it. Hashtag worth it. Any which way, it's awesome coffee. I've said that before. I'll continue to say that, probably for a very, very long time. Unless it becomes unawesome. Then if it becomes unawesome, then yeah, well then, it's not so awesome. That's what unawesome is. So it's actually a pretty nice day today. Uh, it's not too cold at all. It's in the positives right now. I know that. It's supposed to get down to minus one, so it shouldn't be bad at all. Pretty happy about that. Uh, I was promised more sunlight. Liars, you weathermen. The reality is, is that uh, I, I love coming out here. It's so quiet out here right now. The weather's good. It rained a lot in the last couple days, so. I'm not very hopeful on the uh, hardwood, dead wood, dry wood scenario. But we'll see. I want to go take a walk around. I don't usually get a chance to walk around and really kind of just scope things out because I'm so busy doing projects usually that I don't even take the time to kind of really enjoy the area. Um, but we'll do that later. We'll do that later. What I might do is I might set up the cabin, get that kind of organized. Then guys give you a, a shot of what it looks like when it's kind of set up and stuff like that. Just just because uh, as the dark will settle in in a few hours, I'm, I came out semi-early. Um, you, it, less and less you're going to see, the less and less the filming is going to be good. It's going to get to really poor quality and, and then it'll be like, ah, oh, this sucks. And I'll be, yes it does, because I hate darkness when it comes to filming. 
I suck at it. I suck at it a lot. I'm learning a lot every single day, but I suck at it. And uh, I'm gonna, this is a good opportunity to learn more. Yeah, so this is an educational show. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, yeah, coffee, set up camp, go find wood. <laughs> go find wood. <laughs> it's a children's show. Stop it. Um, go collect wood and process it, hopefully, so that I have some hardwood for this evening. If not, I've got plenty of wood available, and maybe I'll process some of that just for something to do. But that's it for now, guys. Uh, I'm going to enjoy my coffee, as I've said, I think three times now. At least, no, uh, two, three, two, three. Anyways, uh, I'm going to enjoy it, and uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll march on. Or get, as my friends say, crack on. I've been traipsing around quite a bit here and my hopes have been dashed. There's a lot of hardwood, but they're gigantic trees comparatively to what I'm used to. And uh, the farther I go away from camp, the less hope I have of dragging it back and safely and easily. I'm not seeing any dead standing, or at least very little of it. Um, that guy there might be promising. He'd be ton to carry back though. But yeah, there's lots of uh, neat trees. Uh, like I don't know what is what. I should start learning. Stop being a dumbass. But uh, I'm just out in the woods having fun. Whee! Oh crap! Camera's over there. Oh. Oh, huh, it's funny, uh, when I originally wanted to do a shelter, I wanted it to be more bushcrafty, that was the original idea, and then when I realized that that wasn't really what I was getting at, all the rest of the camp kind of came to life, but this is the first time I've actually seen any dead birch bark, or sorry, dead bark available. The point is that I wanted to use this to kind of thatch the roof in a way. Some fibrous material there, probably probably all wet. But it's like, it's too bad because I would have really liked to kind of build something like that. But I'll tell you, a dead guy like this is few and far between, that's for sure. Like of this size, you don't see it too often. He's going to fall sometime soon by the looks of it. It's really funny, the other day I was out just walking back and heard a creak. And like a couple minutes later I heard another creak. And then they successfully got faster and then thud. And I was like, oh man, there's probably somebody out here. And it's like, no, that's probably an actual tree falling in the woods. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny that, uh, that you'd be around for that, you know what I mean? It happens probably all the time, but you just wouldn't think of it. But anyways, pretty neat. Some cool fungus on here. Definitely. I am going to wrap this up, head back to camp. Getting hungry again. Battery's dying on that guy, so yeah. A little disappointing. I, I really thought I might find something worth kind of working with, but yeah, it is what it is. Got to see the area a bit. Really hard walking over there. Those ground hemlocks are just crazy hard to walk on. And uh, yeah, so I head back to camp. Uh, yeah, maybe process a little wood. Maybe get some more wood for the camp going. And uh, yeah, and then we'll start a fire up and have some supper and chit chat, hang out, do some thing together, have a party. Not really. <laughs> this is me hanging out in the cabin. Um, yeah. Right. Off we go. The sun!
It has returned! Praise to be, son. Praise to be. Look at that. Is the sun. Oh, come on, baby. Too bad it's going down over there. Sad face. Womp womp. So what I figured I might do real quickly is uh, I know a bunch of my regulars probably have seen a lot of the make videos and the build videos and all that stuff. So I figured I'd give you a, kind of a walk up to the camp just to get a better perspective on the you know the area and stuff like that. Nothing special. And then I'll go in and show you the setup real quick and go from there. Just uh, figure it might be a nice eye opener for you guys. I mean, you, most you've seen it in most shots, but you get a better maybe, perspective of it. So that's the shot from this side here. Should be able to make that out. I'm, I wanted the cabin to be intentionally close so it wasn't a long walk. So if it was raining or something like that, it wouldn't you wouldn't get completely soaked on the way through. And uh, yeah. So I put that little wall up recently too, uh, to block some wind. Fire reflector, you might have saw that video already. And pot stand, something new. Uh, you probably have seen that video too. Um, I made that table a long time ago, same with that table. Nice and spread out. Um, come in super handy when you get to camp, just easy to throw stuff up on it and get started. Give me a little perspective over here, and yeah. So the layout's pretty, pretty basic. I spent a lot of time cleaning this all out and working with it, trying to figure out what I want it to look like. I cleaned this all out here and all that over there because my buddy Ben wants to get into hammock camping, and I wanted to make sure he had lots of room if he felt like coming down to do that someday. Um, here's a little perspective of the side and then my wood storage which I think I might have only posted on Instagram actually and you can see the extension of the pipe there so that's working better I may actually uh, extend it out even further in the future I feel like uh, I feel like I could uh, go a little higher but that'll, that'll work for tonight and uh, lots of wood there and uh, some nice wood lens over there I want to go exploring out over there definitely one place I haven't been very 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 far it looks a little thick but it's fun to take a walk a little walk about and then from this side I think I'll probably cut that now I, I feel like I've, I've got the use out of it I actually thought this sounds really silly but it might work is actually build a ladder right there just in case I need to get up to that roof level and then a handhold up top there and that way I can get up the top of the tarp a little bit thought that might be uh, might be a good idea uh, that's a, a pit I dug because I needed dirt I'm gonna use it as a fridge in the summer I just haven't got around to finish filling it in and creating a little doorway for it I think that will be kind of a cool thing to have. Uh, there's another last look there. Man, I love this cabin. A lot of work went into this. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. <laughs> God damn it, son of a bitch. She's not a big cabin. She's about uh, 11 feet by about seven, you know, in actual width and height. Now, if you include the depth of the logs, it's a little bigger. Um, at the lowest point, it's around a little over six feet. At the highest, it's probably closer to eight. So, as you can see, the stove, yay! Love the stove. It's really good. It's been challenging to figure things out, but uh, as you can see, I put some rocks in the back there to keep it off, keep the heat from getting at the wood. I was a little worried about that. Okay, uh, so I got a shelf here. Thanks to my girlfriend Kelly, bring lugging these down for me. All my food for the night, my mallet just in case I need it. Uh, there's my backpack, awesome backpack. Should um, do a review on that actually. Uh, storage baskets that we leave down here so we can just throw stuff in like the fossils or act as good plates and then that's my medical kit that I take around with me. Some uh, jute twine, blah blah blah. And do a couple shelves 
store things, smoke detector, just in case. If all's going well, it goes back up there. If it's, uh, if it's a little touchy, I bring it down there because it's just nuisance trips like crazy. This is a little candle I made with oil and a mason jar. I'm going to make more of these. I think these could light up this area really well. So I'd like to have like six or seven of these things. And then that way uh, we'll have some kind of awesome night lighting here. Uh, not to mention I got the Coleman here, which I'm excited to use. I love this. I've had it for a year now. I only get to use it on occasion, so I'm just totally excited. And uh, so, yeah, shelf there. Um, that's the sleeping setup there. Use some uh, log storage underneath there. It gets a little damp, but that's okay. I mean, uh, I'll keep refilling the top layer, and then the bottom layer will stay wet, and that's, that's all right. But that gives me some... Uh, uh, basic small logs to work with. Sleep system, pretty straightforward. Um, obviously you got the raised bed. These are yoga mats you can buy at the dollar store, super cheap. Thermarest Neo Air, um, same one as Joe Robinette. I happened to, just happened to buy the same one a couple years ago. This is my first pad and now I have a Neo X Therm, which is a bit better for being out in the cold. Uh, North Face Solution. This is a two two degree bag, so it's not great for winter camping. So I brought a wool blanket with me to keep everything warm. And then I have a Sea to Summit pillow. Fantastic. Uh, if you watch Darwin on the trail, he uses something very similar to that. These things are brilliant for sleeping. Totally worth it. Uh, there's my oil and my uh, combustible fuel. Yeah. So I keep that away from the fire as far as it can be. And uh, let's see, some cooking pots. There's my water for tonight. And la di da di da. All right, so I am actually, the more I think about it now, I'm totally stoked to stay tonight. I wasn't earlier, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, it's sticky. Could be, could be good, could be bad. I'm kind of, you know, just kind of testing out new waters, right? So you're a little nervous about it. And now I'm just getting every second, I'm getting more excited about it. I'm excited to start getting the fire going. I'm excited to get some food cooking on it, have a cup of tea, hot chocolate. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be, this is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So of course, I forgot my headlamp, which is great. Not the end of the world, but very inconvenient for me. Snow joking around. Love this little candle. I'm trying to get the draft started so it doesn't let too much smoke in. What? Too shabby. So I apologize if it's a bit grainy. I gotta steal my cutting board though. Oh, the rice is coming along nicely. Oh, 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 look at that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I find also that uh, interesting point is you can also regulate the temperature in here based on the, that hatch and that uh, draft um, obviously the more I open it up so the airflow it sucks out more air because um, right now I mean beside this especially it's just 
extremely hot. So I'm gonna save this guy for later. So I gotta get my rest of my other meal together. It's not tart. I just gotta pour it in once the rice is done. And we are golden, 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 golden. All right, guys. So I'm gonna uh, keep the food going, and I'll uh, check back in when something else comes up. Bye bye. Hey guys, how's it going? Starting to figure out a few things with the camera. I mean, it might be a bit grainy, but that's what you get with uh, any night photography. Uh, found my headlamp, as I said earlier, uh, so it gives me an ability to at least um, at least have a shot at some extra light kicking around, which is great for the situation, and it saves me from putting the lantern on. So. Yeah, so the fire's uh, cooking. It's really, really warm in here. It's been a great temperature all night, almost too warm at times. Uh, I think the dry air is getting into my nostrils and my forehead a little bit. I'm not like nauseous or dizzy or incoherent or anything like that, but it's definitely affecting my breathing, which, you know, is slightly bothersome in one regard. I bet you I'll pay for this tomorrow. Um, the reality is, is that I'm trying to boil some water in order to um, get some moisture back into the air, but We'll see. It's a little slow going. Other than that, it's been a great night. Supper was delicious. I uh, had my tea. I think I'll have another one here shortly. I'm trying to figure out how to get this guy hot enough to boil water again. It seems to have gone stagnant. I threw a bunch of logs in, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, uh, it's been a really good night. Uh, I'm glad I found my headlamp. Maybe life has been so much better since I did that. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, get up early-ish, probably as soon as dawn breaks kind of deal. Get up and maybe stoke the fire for a little while, get a coffee going. Then I thought I might uh, wander out to the other. As it warms up, it's supposed to warm up quite a bit. It's supposed to rain tomorrow too. Wander out and cook up some breakfast. I might do it in here now that I'm kind of getting the gist of this uh, camera a little bit. and. Uh, should be a little bit more light coming up. I think it will come from over there. So uh, kind of sets over there. So that's my guess, anyways. Uh, yeah. So we'll see about that. But for now, we're just gonna sit out and enjoy the fire. And uh, I learned a lot. I had to go online actually before I go. I, I learned a lot about how to run a fire properly. And you'd think, oh, it's just super easy. You light it, and it is see easy. But there's a few tips and tricks you can you can adjust on how how you run your fire, like keeping the vents open creates air intake, and keeping them closed uh, is not necessarily as good as combustion, right? Whereas when you put in logs, you want to put two or three in at a time. You don't want one because of the cycle at which the wood burns. Like it takes so long for it to kind of get amped up and get going. So by doing two or three, that means you get a, a bunch of them. So you're going to get lots of extra heat, which is what's happening now. It's like, this is perfect. And my feet are warming up and everything because it's coming, it's getting pushed down. So yeah, it's been interesting. And just in that little panic of trying to figure out what's my nose is bothering me so much and it's gotten better but uh you know i got a funny feeling i'm gonna have a sore dry throat tomorrow and the next day i just got that feeling but you know that's part of the part of the game you play when you come out to do these things so anyways again i will not prattle on any longer uh so i'll uh sign off for now i think if i shoot some other stuff i hope it'll be ambient type stuff but that's about it and uh have a good night. See you tomorrow. You probably can't see that, but it's uh, plus two or three degrees right now, so it's starting to warm up quite nicely. Good morning, campers. It was a long night last night. Uh, I didn't get to bed till around, I don't know, 12 or so. And it's kind of up and down all night long. Just couldn't really get to sleep. I don't know, maybe my brain was a bit too active. So, stoked fire maybe two or three times. So, 
It never got below, you know, 10 degrees, 8, 10 degrees in there. So it was pretty warm all night, even with the fire going out. Now it's starting to warm up now, so that's fine too. So, uh, that would explain why it didn't get too, too cold in there while the fire went out. Everything worked out really well. Uh, I got a brew on right now, just uh, trying to knock the cobwebs out of my brain. So I don't know if I'm going to have breakfast in the cabin or if I'm going to have it out here. Probably out here because it's a little too dark in the cabin to film and stuff like that. So can't have a little chat and blah blah blah. So I'm going to go grab my coffee or get it going there and then uh, we'll come back when, when I get the, the other fire going. I'd say she's all done. So it was a good night in the cabin. Really, really warm. Um, again, I didn't sleep very well. Uh, not sure why, but I never really sleep too well in the woods anyways. Uh, but yeah, I had stoked fire two or three times. Maybe a little bit more than that after we went to bed after midnight. But that's fine. That's to be expected. Uh, even when I got up, there was really no heat coming off it, and I, it was still really warm in there. So uh, sorry about the smoke. It's uh, kind of that time when the, the fire is trying to get some flame going again. And uh, yeah, it was uh, worked out really well. Yeah, I really didn't have too many issues. Didn't set up the smoke alarm very often. <laughs> Almost never, actually. Um, it was, uh, pretty smooth sailing overall. I can't really argue with that. Oh, that's really good. Cool. The real challenge is trying to film in that environment, so small, with not a lot of light. Um, I'm hoping the footage that I got was turned out okay, but I'm not sure. It's still a learning process for me, so. As you can tell, it's still raining pretty well down here. Uh, I'm going to eat up my uh, my breakfast here, and then I'm going to pack up and head out for the day. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I mean, it was it's going to be a bit longer, and I apologize for that. But that's what happens when you do overnighters. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you like, that's okay. And uh, give me a comment on what you thought of the video, that'd be great. Uh, in the end, guys, enjoy your own adventures, and take care, okay?